Greetings fellow Pagan Pals, Bella Rosa here for another episode of My Pagan Pal Crafts and Such, the channel where you can find pagan related crafts and such, and we're making Yule Goddess ornaments from clay, so let's get right into it. I started with a few sketches before I settled on a design that I like that fits inside of a 3 and 3 quarter by 1 and 3 quarter rectangle, and then I transferred that image over to a piece of sturdy flashcard paper. I use a crafting knife and cutting mat to cut out my design. It's important to start with the finer details or smaller cuts, the more the paper becomes unstable the more likely those parts will rip so take care of them first carefully score around the design before finally cutting it out don't worry about making a solid cut all the way through the first time around in some parts you may have a full cut in some parts you won't if the paper is really being unruly bend it back and forth a few times and the unwanted paper should come right off you can continue with the crafting knife or switch to scissors i tried them both for the larger cut and i didn't notice any differences now that i have my template i'm ready to put it to use i'm keeping my cutting mat here and putting down some crafting paper though it isn't necessary i'm using air dry clay to make these little goddesses it dries in 24 hours and it doesn't smell at all and it's easy to work with and I'm using a thermos to roll onto the clay but it's not for flattening I'm not really rolling it out too much I want to keep the thickness of the clay so I'm just pressing on it enough to remove lines but what really worked was dipping my fingers in water and smoothing out any imperfections to make my cuts I'm using a clay tool and one of them has a point so that's what I'll use to trace the other has a blade and that's what I'll use to make my cuts tracing is with a light hand so don't go all the way through okay you just want to score the surface now this was my first cut and it wasn't perfect but it is clay it's meant to be molded and it can be repaired like this part of the arm came out kind of flimsy so I just added a small flat wet piece of clay to thicken the arm and use my fingers and the side of a blade to attach it I use the spatula to transfer the sculpture to a piece of cardboard to dry before moving on to the next cutout during the whole time I'm making my cuts I'm making sure that I keep on wetting the surface of the clay every five minutes or so for one thing it helps with preventing the clay from drying out but as a bonus it's helping to make my template stick to the clay so it doesn't shift as you move along be sure to wipe your instruments clean anytime you see clumps or clay forming keeping your tools clean will help you make it easier to trace and cut now I know that this project seems messy and that's because it is but it's therapeutic the holidays can be stressful but right in the middle of all this I said hey I I kind of feel better and I'm sure it's because of all that squishy clay. Once the clay dried I sanded some of the bumpy edges of the surfaces with 320 and 120 grit sandpaper. I'm not looking for perfection here I just want to get everything smooth so I have nicer final pieces. Sanding this soft clay actually goes by really fast especially with the 120 grit so be sure to just sand a little bit pause to check for smoothness and then continue sanding if you need to then finish with the finer 320 grit paper to make it easier to get in between the head and arm space i rolled the 320 grit paper into a pencil like tool a final dusting with a dry brush and we're ready to paint i'm making sure that the base color matches the glitter i'm using so that if i miss any spots when i add my glitter it won't be as noticeable now this blue paint i'm using is just a little too dark for the blue glitter i'm using so i'm adding some white paint to it to lighten it up i continued to paint the rest of the goddesses now once they dry you could leave them just like this and just coat them with mod podge especially if you're using metallic paint like this gold one is just beautiful but we're going for the glitz and glimmer for our goddesses I'm using two tissue boxes and some barbecue skewers to hang the statues to dry I'm also using some junk mail to catch any glitter and easily return any leftover back into the bottle each color gets its own piece of paper so the colors don't get mixed up start by covering one surface at a time with Mod Podge add glitter then move on to the next section when you're done tap the skewer to shake off the excess glitter and hang it to dry it's good to note that I'm actually using my thumb to give me some leverage and keep the statue steady so keep that grip until you're ready to add Mod Podge and glitter to the areas your thumb is covering once they're all dried add one more layer of Mod Podge to prevent glitter transfer and then put them back onto your makeshift drying rack I actually put some Mod Podge in a little cupcake 
eyeliner because I was getting glitter into my big bottle of Mod Podge, so you don't want to do that, so use another container. I was a little heavy with the Mod Podge with some of these, but a thinner layer of Mod Podge will yield a better and faster dried result, so just keep that in mind. Once they're all dried, there's only one thing left to do, and that's to add a decorative holiday ribbon. I'm using red and green, and I cut them to 12 inches before tying the ends together and looping them through the arms of the Yule Goddess ornaments. And there they are. They're so sparkly, and they're really going to shine under those Yule lights on the tree. They're totally customizable and make the perfect present for your fellow pagan pals out there. I hope you guys give it a try. Subscribe now, become a pagan pal, like this video and I'll see you next time for another episode of My Pagan Pal Crafts and Such. Happy Yule everyone!